to anyone who missed the meeting or to all of you if you want to rewatch it. <laughs> Probably not, but just in case. Um, and this is not going to be the, we're going to give you a, a broad overview. And as I was thinking about tonight, I thought a helpful piece of information, well, I have a couple. One is next year will be my 10th year as the high school principal. And before um, I was high school principal, I actually taught in Bronxville. I taught in the science department for six years. But probably the um, most relevant piece of information is I currently have an eighth grade daughter. So she's not at Bronxville, but I can relate to the situation of eighth grade students getting ready to go to high school and sort of the excitement, but also the stress for both your child and yourself. So we are here to help. We are here to answer questions tonight and answer questions going into the future. We're here to reassure you. And um, just this is an opportunity to give, as I said, a broad overview. So I'm gonna stop this poll because I think we've got a lot of information here and I'll share the results. I don't know how this shows, but um, it looks like we have about 53% of the people who answered who's uh, a current eighth grader will be the first child going through the high school and about 47% have had a child go through the high school already or have one in the high school. So that's helpful information to us, mainly because um, those who are new to the high school will probably need some more information. And we might assume that you know something that you don't. So don't hesitate to ask questions. What I'm gonna do right now is share my screen and we're gonna go over some um, information about the high school that hopefully will be helpful to you as you and your child, your eighth grader, get ready to meet with your guidance counselor to discuss course selection for next year. So again, welcome. I'm Ann Meyer. I'm the high school principal for those of you who came in maybe in the last minute or two. Um, and welcome to the parents of the class of 2026, which is crazy <laughs> to think about. And I guess that's my daughter's class because she's an eighth. So um, what we're going to do tonight is we'll start with the counselors. We're going to give you an overview of the program through the counseling department that we provide to guide your child and help you through the high school process of prepare for college and college applications and all that goes with that. And then I'm gonna give you, um, actually, Mr. Kine's gonna give you an overview of the daily schedule, what it's like in the high school, because it's a little bit different than the middle school. And I'm gonna talk about the courses that are offered in all the departments. We have a lot of opportunities in the high school for students to study all different things. So we are going to go through those. Um, I'll keep an eye on the chat as others are talking, but we might have to revisit the chat at the end. So I will hand it over to Mr. Kind, Aaron. Yes, thank you, Anne. Um, it's great to see so many of you uh, again from, from earlier. That's OK. Um, I'm going to reshare and, it. Sorry. Uh, and some new names and faces. Uh, I'm actually going to turn it over to Alyssa Levy in a moment to talk about our programming and services. But I just, uh, while we still have your undivided attention, uh, your appointment day and time to have your child's meeting with their high school counselor is in the mail. Uh, possibly some of you have already received it. If you haven't, it should be there, I'd say by Friday or Saturday. Uh, meetings start, I think, as early as Monday. Uh, last week, we met with the eighth graders in the auditorium and gave them uh, a run through of some of the information you're going to see tonight. On Monday, I'm kind of taking some of Alyssa's uh, talking points here. On Monday, we're meeting with them again. Uh, we're going to bring some high school students to that meeting so uh, your children can hear from some upperclassmen. Um, and then again, you'll you'll have um, some time to meet with their counselor, uh, if not before spring break, then definitely afterwards. Uh, for those of you that missed the six o'clock call, that was for students with 504s and or IEPs. Uh, your child's high school counselor will be at that annual review. Uh, those meeting days and times have also gone out. So um, 
you know, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me, you could reach out to your child's uh, current uh, middle school counselor for when that meeting might be for uh, those that have an annual review. Um, and I think with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Alyssa. And I just, again, it, it's great to see so many of you. Uh, we look forward to welcoming your children into the high school. And um, why don't you take it away? Hey, yeah, so nice to meet you. I'm Alyssa Levy. I'm one of the counselors um, and to echo all of Aaron's sentiments, we're super excited to meet this new class of incoming ninth graders. Um, and so sort of our role as counselors via this awesome programming slide. Um, so we have the opportunity to connect with families and with students through clearly a variety of different programs and meetings in their time at the high school. So as students progress through the different grade levels, we move through sort of like um, a set counseling curriculum that highlights a variety of different areas of exploration. So for ninth grade, uh, primarily students are learning about transitioning to high school and the importance of things like study skills and getting involved extracurricularly. Um, there is actually an activities fair, which will be talked about, that happens in September where students get to see all of the amazing options that they have to get involved in. Um, then in 10th grade, the importance of exploring passions and interest is really highlighted in the context of career counseling. Junior year is when we sort of shift gears and start to speak more practically about the college process. And then obviously as senior students are applying to college. So a ton of information that sort of we disseminate through a variety of different formats, a parent night each year, uh, which we're currently experiencing, um, counseling pushing classes where we go into classrooms, and then of course, one-to-one -one counseling conversations. So alongside covering the topics that I just touched upon, we meet annually both in a grade level meeting as well as one-to-one -one with students and families to talk about course selection. And to Aaron's point, rising ninth grade course selection meetings will be starting next week. Um, and lastly, what I really wanna highlight is that even though we have this amazing set schedule of times that we make contact with students and families, our door is always open. Um, what's sort of left off of this chart is the impromptu meetings we have with students who need a sounding board or a safe space to share and sort of just wander into our offices. Um, and so those are the interactions that, that we love the most um, and we really look forward to getting to know this new class. I believe Ms. Cohen is next. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, it's me, actually. Uh, Deanna <laughs> Hoffman J. Kai. Nice to meet you and see some familiar uh, names on my screen. Um, I'm going to talk about our freshman transition program that we've had for a long time, uh, well before I was at Bronxville, um, which was spearheaded by former director Anna Batacola. I've kind of taken over um, for her with freshman transition. And basically, it's a program where seniors mentor the freshmen. So your child will be placed in a group, which will be revealed at the beginning of the year with senior mentors. And these seniors volunteer and apply to sign up. And they're trained to speak with, the, with your children about you know, specific topics that can kind of help them guide and adjust to the high school. So this year we were happy to have it back in person again. Last year, unfortunately, we were unable to do a lot in person due to COVID. We're planning to have it in person again for the following school year. The students will meet approximately once a month formally, but of course, the students are always free to reach out whenever they have a question and things like that. Students tend to share emails, uh, phone numbers, things like that. So this year we we discussed like a wide array of topics and typically we'll kind of focus on the academic, social and emotional parts of high school. So on the first day of school, the seniors lead the freshmen through a tour of the high school. So students will have copies of their schedule readily available so they can look at where their classes are, ask any questions to the seniors, kind of just a walkthrough of the day, which you guys will hear about later on. We also focus on the social life. So how your child could get involved in clubs and activities and sports. Um, we also, um, Ms. Diaguardi and several uh, students made an awesome study skills website um, that the seniors presented to the freshmen this year. And actually all of our high school students have been walked through the site and have access to it. 
which your child will definitely have access to when they join the high school. It was basically um, student uh, created content where they would, you know, walk students through different tabs, organization, study skills, reaching out to teachers, everything on this nice website uh, available for students to use as a resource. In December, we had a fun gift wrapping uh, event in the cafeteria where seniors and freshmen wrapped gifts for children in need through um, Andrus and a local church in the Bronxville area. Um, that was a great like bonding activity for the students to get to know each other, have fun. And then finally in February, we did a session through the One Love Club at Bronxville where students discussed healthy relationships, healthy friendships, things like that. So with that, I'll pass it along to Ms. Cohen. Hi everyone, it's so nice to see so many people here. We're really looking forward to getting to know your students here in the counseling office in the coming weeks. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about the activities that we have planned um, in the beginning of the school year to welcome the students and get them, um, get them, I guess, engrossed in high school and feeling part of our community. Um, one of the first things we have one of the, I think it's sometimes the first week, sometimes the second week of school is our activities fair. In the high school, we have so many exciting clubs and activities going on, extracurricular organizations. And in, the, in that evening program, um, students and parents are welcome to the high school. And in the blue gym in the cafeteria, all of our student run clubs set up little stations where they actively are trying to recruit our new ninth graders. Um, it's really a great event. Um, kids really like it. The freshmen can sign up to join as many clubs as they want, um, kind of get a little bit of a taste of what each of them are about. And then, you know, as the meetings start, they can attend and start to figure out which they really want to pursue and go to regularly. Um, but they get on the mailing list and, and it's great. And also they get to meet the club leadership, the upperclassmen. Um, and then at the same time, while the students are in um, the blue gym in the cafeteria, you know, learning about the clubs, the counselors and um, other leaders in the building will meet with the um, the ninth grade parents, and we've done different programs, different years. Um, sometimes we have students speak to the student experience, but also have another kind of orientation program that we do for the parents as well. So from the very beginning, from the first week, you know, we're touching base, we're checking in with you, and there's always a lot of Q and A. I did see a question in the chat about freshman transition, and just to answer that, late in August, early September, you'll find out what freshman transition group your child's in. And then like right before school starts essentially and that first day of school is when they'll meet with their whole group. We actually bring the freshmen and their transition leaders in before the rest of the student body so they can meet and get to know each other and get a tour of the school. So just answering that chat question. Great, um, good evening everybody. Um, so uh, obviously, in addition to our programming and our services and clubs, there are academics that are happening at the high school. Um, so we just thought it would make sense to just give you a sense, excuse me, to give you an idea of um, sort of the requirements for graduation. Um, this is nothing that you need to sort of write down or anything of that nature. Your child's counselor will keep track of all of this. Um, by the time you get to high school, our infinite campus system will keep track of all of this for you. Um, but it gives you a good idea of what you can expect your child to take over the next four years. Um, everybody takes English and history for four years. The state of New York only requires math and science for three credits. However, many, if not most of our high school students take those four academic courses for four years um, and so on down the line. Um, the health credit, the art and music credit or, or theater credit are often done in freshman year. However, they don't need to be. Um, and along the way, students kind of pick up these three and a half elective credits. 
Uh, a number of students graduate with more than 22. Uh, you just need 22. Nobody wins any prizes for graduating with 27 or 26. Um, but it just kind of comes out along the way that students are taking above and beyond five and a half credits each year. Um, that's sort of, you know, the, the running um, minimum to get to 22. Um, in addition to the credits, the state um, thanks, the state has a few regents exams that are required for graduation. Uh, you can see them there. Uh, the math regents, uh, for those of you that have children in Algebra 1 currently, they'll take that in June. For those of you that don't, they'll take it when they get to high school, when they finish Algebra 1, and that's fine. Um, English and US history are taken in junior year. World history is taken at the end of uh, sophomore year. And depending upon what science class your child takes in ninth grade, they may take a science regents at the end of ninth grade or they'll take it in 10th or 11th grade. Um, and that's just a broad general uh, overview of the graduation requirements that again, you don't necessarily need to memorize. We are keeping track of those, but it gives you a good sense of what you can expect year over year. Uh, what you see in front of you is what you can expect for, for next year. Um, everybody, again, is going to be in those five academic courses and gym. Uh, this student has uh, a few extra courses, which I'll go through in a second. But again, there's language options, which Anne is going to speak to in a moment. There are math options, which Anne is going to speak to. All ninth graders take the same English and world history class. So everybody, you know, across the five or six sections of English nine and world history one are in the same level English and history course. Uh, there are some options in science, which we'll talk about momentarily. And then all the ninth graders tend to take some type of music, uh, band, orchestra, chorus, or an art class, uh, and they have some options in the art department, which we will talk about again um, as, we, as the night goes on. And then there's some lower level requirements that I mentioned, uh, like health that we tried to get ninth graders to take just to get it kind of out of the way. Um, in addition to that, depending upon, you know, their collection of classes, there might be some time for an electives type course, which which we'll kind of cover again um, in future slides. Um, but really, as 10th, 11th and 12th graders, the schedule starts to open up more and more um, to give them more optionality. Um, the biggest difference, um, well, one of the big differences academically is the is our block schedules. Um, so in the middle school, I think classes are like 46 minutes or 52 minutes, depending upon the day of the cycle. In high school, every academic class, history, math, English, science, health, uh, chorus, band, art, uh, is going to be 80 minutes. And uh, those are just like circled there for you to see. It sounds like a lot. It sounded like a lot when I got to Bronzeville. I came from New York City or working in New York City, 50 minutes, every class, every day. I was like, oh my gosh, the students are in class for 80 minutes. The high school teachers tend to break it up uh, first and foremost. So they're not you know, sitting consecutively for 80 minutes. In addition to that, there's a lot of group work. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, turning and talking. There's, I mean, we were in English classes just today. We walked in and all the students were standing in different groups around the room, were, were doing their work. And so it's not all, uh, it's, there's very few lectures to begin with, but it's definitely not 80 minutes of lectures. And um, the students, uh, you might not be surprised, but uh, the students are actually quickly adapt to the longer class periods and actually rather enjoy it in comparison to eighth grade. Um, that number one, it's not as bad as it sounds. And number two, they don't have the same class every every day. And so for this student's schedule on day one, as an example, um, they're obviously not going to be in that that those same classes until two days later. But what you will hear from us tonight, and I'll say it in a second, and you'll hear from us uh, in September, and your children will hear from us again, is you want to do day one's homework on day one, the night it is assigned. And that gives them a, a few um, things that, that, that benefit them. One, they're not having to do it the night before it's due. Two, if they have any questions the next morning, you can see our extra help is in the morning. Um, they're able to go in and talk to their teacher to, to ask clarifying questions so they can complete the work before it's due. And then three, just 
you know, the way that life works, right? Like you intend to do something tomorrow, something comes up, the internet goes out, there's a storm, um, you know, you have a late practice, et cetera, et cetera, and, and you just don't get it to it. So one thing you will consistently hear from us again is do the homework the nights it's assigned. Um, and I think with that, and I think it's, it's, oh, we can go to the next yep. slide. I just want to mention that this slide is somehow cut off a little. So I don't want to give the impression that school ends at 220. There's another little F block underneath that. So school is the same length of time as middle school, 830 to three. And um, everything else that Aaron said obviously is correct. I just, it, it's not showing that last block. So I wanted to clarify. Um, so this, this okay. spring, I'm going to apologize because my family's making dinner right now <laughs> and it happens to be right here. Sorry about that. Um, this year we, uh, we took our course catalog, which used to be just a long document and we moved it over to a website and faculty have made videos for each course. So in addition to the description that would ha have been in a document, it's still there, it's on the website and you can see the link here. That's also linked off of our um, Bronxville School website under the high school. Um, but you can see videos. And again, there's certain courses that your child is gonna have to take, English 9, World History 1. We'll, we'll be signing them up for PE. Um, we will recommend they take health right away to get it out of the way. Um, but other classes where there are electives, mm -hmm. we'd recommend that you and your child maybe watch the videos to see what the description is. So I'm going to briefly go through the departments to share um, just an overview. You don't need to know this by heart right now, especially for the 50% of you on here who have never had a child in the high school. We're going to right now share a lot of information about a lot of courses in each of the departments. The guy, your guidance counselor is going to walk you through this. And in ninth grade, there's not a lot of space in, in your child's schedule it's over time that the space opens up and some of these electives become available. So don't feel overwhelmed. Again, this is all on our course catalog website. We're gonna share this video with you. We're gonna go over this um, in, in guidance counselor meetings. This is the math uh, set of courses. These are course pro progressions based upon the course that a student takes their ninth grade year. Um, these aren't ha hard and fast, but generally students who who come into a particular course in ninth grade follow the trajectory all the way to 12th grade. So you'll see here, it basically shows three different endpoints: um, calculus, AP calculus, AB, AP calculus, BC. At the bottom, you'll see we have a number of electives in math in addition to these, including AP statistics, AP computer science A, which is a Java programming course, we recently added AP Computer Science Principles, which is an app development course and extremely popular among our students. Um, it gives some overview computer science concepts, but you don't get hardcore into the programming as much as AP Computer Science A does. And we also offer a semester intro to Java programming course. Students who aren't familiar with programming but might want to take AP Computer Science A are highly recommended to take the intro to Java. Again, maybe not in ninth grade. So no APs are taken in ninth grade, but just giving you an idea that there's a lot of options for students as they figure out what they're interested in high school. Um, let me just look at the chat. Um, uh, no, the, the high school chart that I just showed you is based on what the current eighth graders are taking. And there is not personal finance and budgeting, but it does get incorporated into the economics course that our social studies um, department teaches and is required by um, the state for seniors to take. So back to science, our students take what's called the core, which is an opportunity for students to be exposed to all four sciences in their ninth and 10th grade year. Um, the ninth grade core covers chemistry and physics. Next year, it's going to be a, a year-long course, um, not separate semester courses. For those of you who have children in the high school, we're adjusting that ninth grade core. It's 
going to start with more of the chemistry and end with the physics, which would allow students who in ninth grade might be taking algebra one to get some more algebra one under their belt before they get to physics. Um, I will say that some a small, small group of students do something called doubling in the core, which is taking ninth and 10th in ninth grade. So you're taking two science classes each semester. That's very challenging. I would only recommend that for our, our um, very strong science students who are really interested in science and passionate about it. And that's coming from someone who's a science teacher. So um, there's plenty of time in high school to do science. No one needs to rush through it. And what, what the counselors will tell you and what I will tell you is it's very important for your child to come into ninth grade and be successful and build their confidence. So you don't want to necessarily have them in a situation where they've overextended themselves getting into high school because that's that can, you know, they just lose confidence when that happens. Um, level two are year long courses that students tend to take in junior or senior year. So we offer biology, earth science and chemistry. We offer an environmental science course, which is an elective, and then we offer a number of different advanced placement courses in the science department, chemistry, biology, environmental science, physics one and physics two. There's also um, some semester electives. Intro to engineering is a semester elective. Entrepreneurship one is a semester elective and entrepreneurship two is an elective as well. Um, and then Bronx River Research, oh, robotics is also an elective. The entrepreneurship, intro to engineering and robotics, and I apologize, I see there's a typo on that slide. Um, robotics are um, taught in the Innovation Center, which is an amazing space that was funded by the foundation and has 3D printers, um, laser cutters, et cetera, where students can prototype. And this year, our ninth graders for their physics um, did a project where they built uh, crash test cars and then added innovations to the cars to decrease impact. Um, and they used the Innovation Center to build those. So a lot of options in science. And I'm just going to take a look. Um, is it possible to take AP Music Theory in ninth grade? No, we don't really have ninth graders taking APs. Do you need a certain math level before you take physics? If you look on that course catalog website, there are prerequisites. Yes. For AP, fit, not, oh, sorry, not for core physics. No, no, no. That's built for any student to take. For AP physics, yes, you do need a certain math. Um, are bio and earth science classes now merged? No, they're not. Just the ninth grade physics and chem is merged. Those are great questions. Can I just chime in for, real quickly? Because um... Uh, usually it becomes uh, a hot topic. Uh, there are seven ninth graders currently doubling in science. Uh, seven of the hundred and you know thirty-five. 35. Thank you. Uh, and I believe last year maybe there were five. Um, so it you know gets a lot of talk, but it's really not something that is uh, popular. Um, I'll also add that, and this is kind of getting into future planning, but um, you again have an opportunity if you are interested in doing so um, as a 10th grader to double up in science as well. Um, you know, your child's counselor can kind of go into the more granular details of what that looks like, but um, don't feel like your child must do this or needs to do this or and obviously by the fact that there's only seven people doing it not everybody is doing it thanks aaron okay english right here you'll see we have english nine as aaron mentioned all ninth graders take that english 10 all 10th graders take and then when we get to 11th grade students are either taking English 11, or they're taking AP English Language, which is a course that focuses on nonfiction and rhetoric. Um, and then in 12th grade, we have English 12 or AP English Literature. And AP Lit is definitely, as it says, a course that's focused on poetry, literature, literary analysis. So um, no decisions need to be made now about this, just putting it out there. We also have some electives in the English department, 
Um, Mr. D'Alessandro, who himself is a playwright who has had plays uh, produced on Broadway and off Broadway, teaches a playwriting course. The students actually end up over that course writing their own one act play and then those plays get performed. And then we also, that's a year long course. And we also have speech and debate, which a good number of ninth graders do take because it fulfills um, a performing arts requirement. That's a semester course. Um, grammar is incorporated each year in English. Absolutely, we have it, we have it aligned across the high school. We also have posters which indicate what students should have mastered from their prior grades. So what do we expect them to already know how to do? And then each grade level in high school incorporates different grammar techniques. Are there prerequisites for AP Lit or AP Lang? Again, um, I'll just say this in general. Uh, we have prerequisites for any advanced course, but um, we have open enrollment in advanced placement courses, which is to say that if your child does not meet the prerequisites, they're still able to enroll. And um, there's certain courses where students sometimes enroll more often without having the prerequisites. And other courses like AP Calculus, you're not going to really take that unless you have the prerequisites. So um, there are recommended grades that a student should have gotten in their prior English courses, which would indicate that that student is prepared for and can be successful in something like AP Lit. And so those are in the course on the course catalog website. To continue, social studies, similar to English, ninth grade, everyone takes world history one. In 10th grade, we have world history two, which ends in a regents, or students do have the opportunity, uh, if they've performed well in ninth grade, to take AP world history. That also requires the regents um, exam to be taken at the end. 11th grade, we have US or AP US. 12th grade, students are required to take a semester of economics and a semester of political science, or they take AP Econ, which um, covers micro and macroeconomics. It's actually two different AP exams and fulfills that Econ Poli Sci requirement. In the social studies department, every other year we run a psychology elective. Next year we're running it. It's a semester elective. And every year we run Bronco TV, which is a class where our students produce the Bronco TV episodes that you can see um, if you follow me on Twitter. So <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll put something in the chat if anyone wants to add, but we also share those out with uh, high school. World language, just like middle school, we have French, Latin, and Spanish. In the high school, we also have an opportunity for students to start Mandarin. That is a course where we do not have a teacher in the building. We coordinate with a local um, organization that provides the teacher. So students essentially Zoom with the teacher. It's actually quite successful. Um, and right now we have Mandarin one, two, and three in the high school. French, Latin, and Spanish, if a student uh, took any of those in middle school and then enters that next level in high school, it would be French 9, Spanish 9, or Latin 2. By senior year, they'll end up taking an AP level, um, AP, AP level course in that language. Um, this year was the first time we offered semester electives through the World Languages Department. Uh, one is philosophy and the other is mythology, and they've been extremely popular. So those are options. It is possible to double up on language, absolutely. Um, so we do offer, we try to offer a level one in each French, Spanish and Latin. We don't always have enough students to offer all of those, um, but we always have a Spanish one available and then Mandarin one will definitely be offered. Latin and French, if we get enough students, we can run a section. If we don't, we can't unfortunately. Um, the language program, so the French program has an exchange experience. It hasn't happened, obviously, in a couple of years. Um, we're going to try to go to France next year with our exchange students. I believe we just found out that the French students can't come um, next year. It would have had to have been in the fall. We've not done a Spanish exchange in the last few years, but there is a school we have a relationship with that we've done an exchange with maybe five years ago. 
Um, performing arts, sorry, are the languages offered at a beginner letter? Um, so the level ones do not require foundation. Um, sorry, I'm just going to go back for this. So if a student ends up in Mandarin one or Spanish one, or if we run French or Latin one, there's no foundation required. A student can just enroll in that. Is there a placement exam for AP Spanish? I'm not sure what you're referring to, but if you um, students in Spanish four go to AP Spanish for senior year, if there's no placement to get into AP Spanish, you just go from one level to the next. If I misunderstood your question, let me know. Okay, we also have obviously performing arts, which continue from middle school or a student can start. They haven't done it before. Orchestra, band, and chorus. We have um, acting, which is a semester course taught by Mr. Cross, who is the producer of our school play in the high school. We have directing, which has been taught by Mr. Cross, but has also been taught by Mr. D'Alessandro, the person who's a, a playwright. Um, and as I said, we do have speech and debate. It's offered through the English department, but it does count for performing arts requirement. Because if you remember that slide Aaron went over about New York State requirements, you do need one year of performing arts to graduate. Okay, um, and then we have the fine arts. So we have a pretty extensive fine arts program that um, if you've had a chance to go through the town this weekend, if you haven't yet, our student artwork is up in many of the merchants stores and it's quite unbelievable. And in fact, I guess when it was being installed, some of the um, owners of the stores were asking if it was for sale. <laughs> so uh, we have Studio Art 1. If a student wants to go through a progression of Studio Art courses, you would do one, two, three, four, and then end in AP Art senior year. We usually have about 20 students taking AP Art each year. Um, that's a portfolio course where students develop a portfolio they submit. We also offer AP Art History, another very popular course. They just recently went to the Met on a field trip to see some of the works they had studied. And then we have some semester electives, digital photography, computers and art, ceramics, and creative crafts, which is like ceramics, but can fulfill the fine arts requirement. Let's see. I think that is it as far as going over our um, course offerings. And so that, again, I, not to overwhelm you, but I guess the message from us is the following. High school is an opportunity for students to explore all different interests. As a small school, we do have limits in terms of what we can offer, but I feel like we have a lot of options for students given our size. We really do our best to provide students courses that they're interested in. Two years ago, a group of students came to us. They were in AP Physics 1. They said, we really want to take AP Physics 2. I said, how many people do you have? And we offered AP Physics 2 the next year. So um, we're, we, we were pretty much at our maximum in terms of the courses we can offer. But I have to say that our students have an opportunity to really explore a lot of different areas of interest. And so next year, when your child is a freshman, they'll have a little room for electives. Talk to, they should, the, all of you should talk to your guidance counselor about what they might be interested in and try some things out. This is why doubling in science it really locks up your schedule. I mean, that ninth grade year, kids should be doing interesting, fun, exciting classes that they might want to try and then possibly pursue or not later in high school. So um, I will say it's a little bit less of an issue with ninth grade, but we do build the master schedule based on student requests. So, you know, you're going to want to, your child's going to want to be as accurate as possible in the requests they make during your meeting because their likelihood of getting into those courses is higher if they request them ahead of time instead of trying to add them later. Um, I'm going to look in the chat and then we can open it up, uh, do electives. Okay, so what we try to do is we look at our signups for our electives and from our signups we determine the number of sections we can offer. 
So we really try to accommodate student interests. If I can, if, if I have enough students, one of the classes this year, AP Computer Science Principles, Mr. Kine and I have talked about it. We have a lot of kids who want to take that. I'm going to do everything I can to offer enough sections for them to get in it. Um, so that's our goal. It doesn't always happen. Usually a student gets bumped out of a class, not because we don't have enough room, but because it just doesn't fit in their schedule. So that, that's, that can happen. Students can conflict out, not because the, the class is capped, but it just doesn't fit in their schedule. Um, BOCES courses. So I think you're probably talking about the OC21 courses. We've looked at our enrollment numbers. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to offer those next year, mainly because our enrollment's been so low, it hasn't been particularly cost-effective to offer them. But we continue to explore that option. Um, psychology is available to ninth graders, yes. And... Oh, so I'm sorry, the core science, those are semesters. Apologize if that wasn't clear. So the core is semesters. So students in the ninth grade take chemistry and physics. That's one class. And in 10th grade, take a semester of earth science and a semester of biology. So it's not four years of science, it's two years. Aaron, did you have something to add? No, I was just going to try to jump in and uh, let you catch your breath. Um, Go for the it. The prerequisites for AP Art History, again, are, are listed on the course catalog. And if I had to do it by heart, it would be based on the students' uh, grades in history and English uh, the previous year. The All our AP classes, um, students can begin to access um, in 10th grade. I should say some of our AP classes, they can begin to access in 10th grade. AP Art History is a good example of one of a few classes 10th graders might elect to take. So again, as a ninth grader, nobody is taking advanced placement courses. Uh, the math track. Um, yeah, yeah, let me answer that because I had a chance to read that pretty carefully. And thank you for um, adding that back. So I understand your question. So students who are currently in Algebra 1 are going to take the Algebra Regents. Um, but there's, there are grades in that course and their score on that Regents and the subscores of the Regents help determine whether they go to geometry, geotrig, or I'm going to say this wrong. Ge geometry honors. Yeah, geometry honors. Thank you. Um, the reason we also have Algebra 1 which is that third track, is both for students who are in, I think it's called Math 8H. Um, those students would go to the Algebra 1. But if a student's in Algebra 1 in eighth grade right now and they do very, they don't do great this year and they do poorly on the Regents, um, they could retake Algebra 1 next year and nothing from eighth grade would show up on their high school transcript. So remember, if your child is in Algebra 1, and moves on from that, the grade from that course and the regents go on their high school transcript because it becomes a high school course. So some students, parents may choose to retake Algebra 1. It erases the eighth grade and replaces it with that um, ninth grade course. I will say I also taught math back in the day and um, a student's Algebra 1 ability will determine all of their math going forward. So do not rush Algebra 1. If your child is struggling, if they're not doing particularly well, I cannot recommend enough that they retake Algebra 1 because everything requires those Algebra 1 skills. And then finally, your question refers to Algebra 1A, 1B. Algebra 1A is a year-long course. Algebra 1B is a year-long course students that are in that series, which is a two-year Algebra One series, take the regions after two years. And those are students that um, teachers recommend to that sequence so that they can be successful in Algebra One and on the regions. So that's actually a two-year Algebra One course. I hope that answered the question. Anyone would like to unmute and ask a question? or put anything else in the chat. We've given you a lot of information. 
This was just your introduction. We're going to meet you again in person, knock on wood, in person at the very beginning of ninth grade in September, that first week when your children are signing up to be part of clubs. We're going to sit down again. Questions will come up by then. We're there to answer them at that point. Anytime between now and September, you're going to have a meeting with your guidance counselor. You might call them again, your child might stop in again, or you can email Aaron, you can email me, you can email any of the counselors with any questions. We're here to make sure you feel like you have the information you need for next year. Anything else? We're going we're gonna, to um, send out this recording if you missed anything. And when I send that out, I'll also send a link to the slides. So you'll have a direct link to that slideshow as well. I'm going to say that if you don't have any questions, thank you. But I, Aaron and I will stay here for another minute or two so that if anyone wants to stay, stay after and ask us a question, you're welcome to. So thank you so much. Have a great evening. We look forward to meeting you in person in September. So Anne, and sorry, Aaron, I'm yeah. so sorry for my um no, I'm that's the fine. texting the bath questions. And so just having uh, my other two go through the honors track, and I, Aaron, you were so patient with me. Um, we spoke about this actually last year. So with a, uh, a you know son or daughter who has uh, chosen the eighth grade regular track, I'm still trying to get my arms around the the ninth grade. And it sounds like it's all the same. Like enough, because the eighth graders uh, switched, with the um, you know two math options versus three, I my question last uh, uh, spring was would that result in any changes to the sorry about that to the um, high school math tracks? I think the answer is no. Mm -hmm. um, and then so that's if that's the case. So then, so that algebra one class essentially splits in high school. So the students in that class end up in either GeoTrig or GeoH based on their performance in Algebra 1 and their performance on the regions. But let's say if you were in uh, uh, eighth grade regular, like not uh, not Like algebra. Math 8? Correct, Math 8. That, that goes to Geometry. I'm that's sorry, that goes to Algebra that goes 1. To algebra. That goes to Algebra 1. I apologize. I'm sorry, so, and, and Algebra 1 is a semester? It's a full year. That's a full year. Oh, the one thing that is going away next year that we had this year was that algebra one cc where you would double in math that will no longer exist you don't double in math your first semester anymore okay so if you then are in regulars then you go to algebra one for a full year then mm -hmm. like, and geometry is your is 10th grade mm -hmm. and then yep algebra two is 11th and then pre-calculus is is 12th but i'll just uh add a caveat to that, uh, students in math eight are going to be recommended for either algebra one or algebra one A. Um, so, you know, again, that um, recommendation, you'll, uh, your child, I'm actually meeting with uh, the two math teachers uh, this week to make sure that they've shared these recommendations before you hear them with your child's counselor at the, at the course planning meeting. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, that recommendation comes from your child's math teacher. Um, and, and the same goes true for those students in Algebra 1, right? Like based on their grades thus far this year, there will be a tentative recommendation for ninth grade math pending quarters three, four, and, and the their, regents. their score in the regents and also their sub, the regents is broken up into different sections. Uh, there's multiple choice questions, there's free response questions. And so we do a pretty deep analysis of students' scores on the free response questions and kind of add that to the matrix of, of making the, the final decision for uh, placement in ninth grade math. Uh, more specifically, placement into the geo trig course versus the geometry honors course. Okay. I have a, oh, sorry, go ahead, Sarah. 
No, no, thank you. I st I'm still a little confused, but I, I, it's making more sense every time you walk it through me. So I really appreciate it. <laughs> it's very it. confusing. It is a little. I had it just such an because easy time. Because you, you yeah. got your math, your math eight is either going to go into algebra 1A, 1B. That's a two-year sequence. Yep. Or it's going to go into algebra one. Okay. Yep. Your, your algebra one kids are either going to go into GOH or they're going to GeoTrig. GOH is um, the trajectory to AB calculus and GeoTrig is the trajectory to BC calculus. Okay. I don't know if that helped, but that, that's why it's like there's four. So it's almost like you're taking two classes. Each class is going to split and you're going to end up with four different options for next year. And the decision, and this is my last question, and I'll just uh, then wait for my advisor meeting. So thank you for the yeah. promise. Is the, um, the the decision if you're in regular eight math, then if you do relatively well, you know, above average, whatever the distinction. You're going to go to algebra one. Okay, so then the algebra one A and then the one B for one year, one year for kids who are really struggling, struggling. in math okay. eight. Yeah, thank I mean you. those classes, and they have more than just ninth graders in them. There's like maybe 10 or 12 kids total in those. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I had a, a question. Yeah, thank you as well. It's, it's mm -hmm. very helpful. Um, I had a question about the regents. Um, if they're taking it in June, you do that assessment over the summer. So does that mean that they don't know what yep. they're taking until the beginning of the year? No, 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 no. So a tentative, a tentative placeholders put in right now and then we look at the end um, at their final grade, their third, like Aaron said, their third grade, quarter grade, their fourth quarter grade, because math gets harder, algebra one gets harder over the course of the year. So we really need to look at that fourth quarter grade. And we actually grade the regents, everyone who takes it. There's a bunch of high schoolers that take it and eighth graders, the math department, the middle and high school math department grade it the day after it's given. And we will get a spreadsheet within a day and then it goes to the guidance department and they essentially look and see did anything change from the recommendations that came out right now did any student end up doing worse or better and do we need to tweak any of those decisions and that information gets shared with parents it. so it actually okay. all happens in june if you can believe it so by the end of june things are finalized Okay, that's helpful. And then yeah. um, two more questions. If uh, what's the implication if they don't take the test, the regents? And then I thought you said that um, I, I didn't realize that the grade for algebra one, if they're taking it now, counts on their mm -hmm. high school transcript. Did you also say that the regents exam goes on their transcript? So we don't show we don't show their scores on our high school transcript. Um, so it, it doesn't, the score doesn't really show up, um, but, but their grade in the course does show up because it's a, a high school course. If they're taking a Regents exam for it, which is a high school graduation requirement, then the grade in the course, it's just the final grade. It's not quarter grades on the high school transcript, only final grades for each course show. So it will count in their GPA that they will use to apply to colleges. So that's why it's important, you know, you have to consider, do you feel like, do you and your child feel like they did well, they understand it and they want that to be on their transcript. Um, in terms of if they're not here for the algebra one regents, is it, are you feeling like your child might not be here? I guess I'm wondering, like they, yeah, I, they I, pretty um... much, I think they have to, I don't know what accommodation would be made. I guess they could take the August Regents, but then the decision won't be available until after that Regents is taken, is I guess what I would say. Okay, yeah, that's helpful. I know I had spoken to Aaron. Um, oh, okay. But, well, it, I don't have to monopolize a call on this. But, no worries, you know, no worries. <laughs> it's good to, good to know all of the, the moving parts. Thanks again. Yeah, absolutely. And And if you, yeah, if we need to follow up, just let us know. Thank you, everybody. Any other questions, feel free to email us or reach out and we'll be happy to answer them. Have a good night. Good night, everybody.